Hello and welcome to Simulation TV. My name is Sean Gedman and today I wanted to take you through uh, how to use some custom materials in the Simulation Mold Flow product. So our problem description, um, basically it's we're going to take you through some of the options you have when you need to use a custom molding material that is not in the material database by default. So we'll follow this up with a live demo that will demonstrate how to do this. Some key learning objectives. Um, so objective one is we're going to basically present you the options or let you know what options you have to you in these situations. Uh, we have thousands of materials in the default database but there are a lot out there on the market so um, it's very likely that you could run into this situation on one of your jobs in the future if you haven't already. So um, what we're going to go through is also is how to create a personal database and then in addition to that, how to modify that personal database for future use. So when your material is not in the database, we basically have three options. One of course is to talk to the material supplier and that material supplier can either recommend an alternative material to you that is available in our database or um, a lot of times they maintain their own material database and have what we call UDB files which are the files that we use to uh, utilize the material data in our software for the solvers to use that material data. So keep in mind that you are their customer as well so a lot of times they are very willing to help out and a lot of the custom compounders do maintain their own databases so if you call them they might even say well here's the material file that you need we already have that generated for you. The second option would be to submit the material to our data fitting department so that they can create this UDB file for you. Um, for additional information on that, you can contact them at datafittingmoldflow at autodesk.com. But the general workflow in this case would be they give you an Excel sheet template that would have the material data that's required to fit to create this UDB file. Once you have all that data, then you can send it into them and they'll fit the material file for you so you can use it in the software. Now, of course, the final option would be to have the material tested. This would be uh, the, probably the, one of the better cases if in comparison to doing an alternative material, but of course there will be costs associated with this. So you can contact mplmoldful at autodesk.com and they can test your material. They'll create the UDB file and send that to you so you can import it into our software and use it. Keep in mind that you also have partial testing available. So if you can obtain maybe half of the data to have a UDB file fit, then the lab could always do testing on the other half and you know save some time and money for you. So that's all we have for now. We'll go into the live demo. Hope you enjoy. All right, we'll go into our live demo now where I'll show you uh, two methods for importing your material file. There's method one, which is going to be a very quick and easy way to import your material file. And then the second method will be actually creating a material database and that you can modify and use at later times and add several materials to if you plan on uh, working through or working with several UDB files. So the first method is very simple. Basically all we have to do is go into as if we are selecting our material and you'll see an import button right here in our material selection guide. So you look for the UDB file, double click on that and it should be in your material database. Now the one caution that I will give you is that sometimes people expect it to be in alphabetical order within this material list, but any imported materials are going to be in alphabetical order, but they'll be at the bottom of the list here. So 
You can see here's a sample polystyrene that I imported. It is there and we can use it now at this point. It's as easy as that. Now, the second method, probably the one that I prefer more because, or better over the first one because I do a lot of work with UDB files. I like to kind of maintain a library that I can use and maybe pass from release to release. So um, to do that, we'll go to our tools menu and you'll see this option in here now for a new database. So when we click that, the first thing you really just need to do is come in here and first select what type of material we're working with. You know, we're going to use a thermoplastic material for this exercise, but you can build databases for pretty much any of the materials in there, coolants, uh, mold materials, thermosets. So just make sure you have the proper library selected before going to this next step. Now, of course, we want to give our library a name. So I'm just gonna call mine Sean's mater Sean Materials. And the directory you'll use is going to be this UDB directory. This is um, just in your project directory when you install the software. Um, we wanna keep it here so we can uh, you know, pick it up within the, the menu dialog. There are some other options we can do, uh, more advanced tasks to maybe share this on a network, but we'll avoid that on this topic of conversation to kind of keep this as a general overview. So I named it, saved it, and hit OK. Now once you have your database created, you can see it's up here, it's showing you the destination, your folder, what it's called, and now you really just need to pull your material into this database. Now sometimes it can take a minute or two when you're doing this because by default it's going to pull up the entire database, the default material database. So <clears throat> this is useful for not only uh, bringing in and building your own, but you can also copy materials in the current library up to here and this is where you can modify them because you cannot edit the default library you can only edit your personal databases so once you have it in your personal database feel free to uh, modify it as you see fit for this exercise I pick my sample polystyrene here for our tape dispenser and you can see it pulls it up and we'll just copy it up there hit OK and it should be there so um, now when you go in your material selection list just as I mentioned before it's it was called Sean's materials but it won't be in the S's, it'll be at the very bottom of our list here, Sean's materials. We can go in there and then you would have all the materials in your library listed under here. Um, now if you wanted to modify this at a later time or add to it, that's very simple as well. All you have to do is come up here to edit, pick the file you want to modify, Sean's materials. And then from there, you can modify the properties of this particular material, import additional UDB files, or so on and so forth. So hopefully you've learned something from our simulation lesson today. Um, have a good day.